Hello, what's going on guys? Um, hope you're good, hope you're well, hope you've been shooting, hope you've been editing, and I hope you switch the sound on properly when you do your videos. <laughs> So, seeing as the video is late, uh, that's why. Because yesterday I filmed this all, I edited this all, and then when I listened to the audio from the playback, the audio was really bad because I had the Rode shotgun mic on it, but it was kind of to the side of my face. Here's the example of what I did. Okay, these are very dark, but they really came out cool. Um, and the audio is really bad. And instead of just putting it up and it's sounding like poo while you try and enjoy the video um, I decided to just not do it yesterday and then refilm it today I'm gonna do a live edit now um, and then I'll do two more which I'll speed up and then you can see how I color grade and how I kind of fix skin and so on uh, for a regular shoot if it's a more commercial high like high quality shoot I would have done a bit more to the shots but uh, that's the gist of it that's kind of what I've been doing so uh, this is a bit different to my other videos. Um, I don't really like doing the editing one so much unless it's very complicated but seeing as I didn't have much to do and I wanted to get something out, here's one. I did a natural light portrait shoot with uh, Chloe Mia. In the, it was in a park on the side of the road. I used the Canon 70-70, D. I used the 50mm 1.8, it's not the STM one, the really cheap plastic one. And then I took my 135 f2 L lens, which is an awesome lens and um, it's cost double the camera, but it's, uh, I wanted to have a little bit of a different uh, frame. I'm actually looking for a 100mm 2.8 macro rather because I feel like the f2 is overkill. But um, I shot most of the shoot with uh, face tracking turned on on the 7070 using the LCD and it really like hits focus um, even at 1.8 and then um, I used no flashes just natural light uh, a lot of the shots it was sun coming from the top like the swing shot that I'm going to do and uh, so to neutralize that instead of blowing out the face detail I underexposed quite a bit and I lifted the shadows so that uh, the shot would neutralize anyway I hope you enjoy the show and uh, see you later okay so um, we're on the computer now um, I'm using OBS to record, so if you want to check out what OBS looks like, this is the program, um, that's the icon there. It's uh, pretty much a screen recorder, it can, it, guys use it to stream and to do Twitch for uh, gaming. So um, I'm using this to record. I'm going to show you how I process all the files from Chloe's shoot that I did yesterday. Um, I did a video of this yesterday already, so i got to redo it because... Um, the audio was really crappy. I had the shotgun mic connected to the camera and it wasn't exactly picking it up well. So I've put the lapel mic on so that you can hear better. Um, and see if I can show you how I do my grading and my process. So um, I'm going to go into Lightroom. I've kind of done this already so I'm going to have to do it again. Okay, see I've done some of these already. I uh, put them on Instagram. I did have this video up yesterday, but I couldn't because I messed up the audio. So, um, we're going to start over. So, what I would normally do is I have all the RAWs stored in its own folder. Then I drag it in. Then I import. Um, so, I was using face tracking for most of these and it really did well. Um, some of these shots, let me show you. Like these ones, I edited this one yesterday, oh it came out nice. So this is flat now, it's not graded or anything, but you can see that the focus on the eyes, once it loads, is really good. At f2, um, with no, sh with no uh, flash, so, and the dynamic range, you can see she was quite shaded, I kind of underexposed a little bit, um, so I could keep the background in and then I could lift this. So um, that's, that's the before, let me show you the... When I, when I was done, where did I put it? Okay, so this this was the edited shot. So that you can, it's kind of cool that I'm doing this now, but um, that's after color grade and, and retouching. So, I mean, really works. I really like this camera. Um, 
obviously probably my 5D could do this as well, but because I haven't used, um, I've only used the 5D, it's kind of cool to use something else. Um, so let's look for something new because I've done most of these. Um, Actually, let's um, let's redo one of these. About that one. So I've graded this already. Um, I've exported and everything because I, I was starting to work on the shoot after I did the video. But then when I listened to the audio from the video, it really didn't work. Okay, so this is F2, uh, 100 ISO, and then 320th second. So this is uh, the 135 F2 lens. Um, so what I normally would do before I if I had to work on a job is I'd go through the whole list, I'd push B so it adds it to quick, and then if the shot looks good or the, the, the shot looks good, even if it's not in focus, I'm still gonna quick select it, and then the second time around, I will take it out if, it, if I really missed focus. So um, say I wanted those two, I wanted, what's that one like? Focus. Eh, it's okay. This is quite cool. She was moving here. Yeah. Um, she was swinging and it was tracking with uh, face track. And it's, it didn't miss. It's very impressive. And I was quite far away. Focus. See, so it, it didn't even miss. And I'm far away with a really low f-stop. Um, but anyway. So that one, let's do one of these more dramatic ones. So that one, and we'll do, we'll do, these were quite nice. Even though I've done this one already. Let me come back on my face. Um, Let's do this one again. It really looked cool after I graded and finished it. Um, it's a, I think it was a better, more in focus one. Wow, computer's going slow. I think the OBS is quite demanding, so it's, it's messing with my CPU. So let's say that one, right? So it is, I underexposed a bit because the background is very bright. So that's the sun and the sky. Um, so to keep that, you can see that's the highlight from the sun, that spot and that spot. But you can still see detail in it, which is why the dynamic range is quite good. <coughs> so what we'll do is we'll take those ones. Then I would obviously do it to all of them, but then I go quick selection, then it's the ones I want. So let's say that one, okay, we'll leave that one. So these three, I'll do these three. So first things first is when I import, I've made a preset, which I don't really use, but it imports with the preset and that's just to change this setting. Um, so it always starts it up with this one, which is flatter and sometimes looks a bit stranger. So um, this is its own color. I'd like to import it as a neutral from my camera, just so it looks like I would have seen it on my camera. Um, so instead of coming into each photo and changing that every time I've made a preset so that when it imports, it puts that and then it puts a little bit of sharpening on my shots as I import them so that I only have to work on the grading. So the sharpening was already added. You can see if I turn it off. Ooh, what happened? If I turn it, if I turn it off, that's before and that's after. It didn't really do a great deal, but I, I like to just do that. So let's never leave that. Okay, so, okay, and it adds 15 clarity. That's that's what I add to my shots always when I start. Now I'd add some vibrance, just to see if the colors go up a bit. Yeah, and then I would, so normally I'd add a bit of contrast, see what it does. And then I will drop the blacks, which, Firstly, if I, if I lift the shadows, it takes away some of the like sharpness. It's almost, look, it's still sharp, but it, it takes away from that like sharp look of the blacks being black. Then I will drop the blacks, and that's usually a starting point. And then I will mess with the highlights. So normally, 
You could pull the highlights down and the background will go darker. But then the highlights on her eyes and stuff are also going darker. So, so I don't try to do it too much. So I'd rather, what I've started doing is I'll, I'll maybe drop it a little bit. Like that. So that's the great about. And then I will go into this tool. Which is kind of like the brush tool. And then I will drop the exposure a bit. And I'll drop the highlights a bit. And then I will fix the part of the highlights I want to fix. Um, let's see if I can fix it a bit more though. So I'm not too um, fussy about how, how it's hitting the, the shot. Because I mean it's very out of focus so it doesn't matter. But uh, you can recover quite a bit of this because that's pure like harsh sun. Okay, so that's before and after of the quick quick color grade. How long did that take? Like two minutes. Right? Um, this yellow in her skin, you could fix in here, but I fixed it in Photoshop. Um, I fix all the blemishes in Photoshop. I don't do any of it in here. Lightroom is purely for me to cull through shots, get the bad shots out, and then color grade the beginning part of the edit in here. Unless it's an event, then I try to do all the color grading in here, and then that's all I do. Um, First things first is I would run this base, I call it base action, which kind of like it's putting a darkening f uh, layer, which on mid-tones, it's putting a warming layer over the whole shot, and then this is a bit of brightness, and this is a bit of vibrance, right? So these two don't do much. But this one, I used to kind of darken backgrounds a bit, or darken stuff that's a bit too bright, and then this is in case I shot too cold, um, I can warm it up a bit. So. What I'll do is though, I won't use the action so you can see what I'm doing first and then you can go from there. So what I would do is I take a curves, it's very simple, you pull the middle a bit down, that'll drop the background. It'll drop the mid-tones and the backgrounds won't really do much to the highlights, so these parts won't do much to it. And then I would either pull this in a bit, which will darken the blacks, but normally that's fine. If I want to darken the whites, then you need to pull this part down, then it will like neutralize the whites a bit so you can see what's happening to your shoulder. Um, but that's fine. So that's a darkening layer. You can rename these, but I don't. Uh, warming layer, you put a curves layer. You go uh, red, you add red. Then you go curves, you go blue, then you minus blue, and that's adding yellow. And then you can see that's orange. So you can play with that as much as you want. That's the curves. Then on this one, I take uh, vibrance a little bit. And then here, I put some brightness in it. That's just my starting point. I like to start like that. It, you can always delete these layers if you don't like them. Um, so that's all. Now, that would have happened in one go if I clicked um, my base thing. But, uh, so that's it. So then you take this mask, then you take um, a black paintbrush on default colors, and then with black. And then I leave my opacity on 100, so you push 0 to make it 100, 1 to make 10, and so on. Um, my flow is almost always on like a 5, I click this for pressure for my tablet, and then all you're going to do is, if it's a white mask, that means it's working. Think of it as a white piece of paper and black is going to be like, like an eraser. So you're cutting out the middle, you're cutting out what you don't want that to affect. So if that's a piece of white paper and you cut her out, then obviously you could see through it into the original shot, right? So all you do is you take a soft, so it's not a hard brush, let me show you. So it's like a 13 or so, so the middle's kind of hard and the outside is very feathered. So don't be too fussy about it, just kind of remove it from her. And then if you want to remove it from parts of the background. Oh, OBS makes my computer go way slow. So if you want to move it to parts of the background, you kind of paint it on there. Right, so if you want to see what it did, so you can see where she was, it's been cut out, and then only the white parts what's getting darkened. So that's what that did. Um, try and make sure you get all of her. Then the warming layer, I usually just drop the opacity here, and then that'll make it less warm. And if you hold Alt and click on the original, it'll show you with all those adjustments off and on. So that's all I did. That'll give it a nice glow to it. Maybe a bit less. Now we flatten. Um, I also made a shortcut, which is uh, Control Alt One. That'll make the whole image flatten, and then. So, we've done the first color grade, usually I do it to all of them and then carry on. But for now, first we're going to do, we can use sep uh, frequency separation to clean the skin, but we're going to 
we're gonna clean it with the parts that are really bad we're gonna clean first and then we'll go to frequency separation to clean the rest so all you need to do is make a new layer right take the patch tool, I like to use the patch tool because it's bigger areas. Um, if you don't like to use the patch tool, healing brush is cool. So that one you sample and then you replace with it. Um, but most of the time I use the patch tool. Go through phases where I prefer one or the other. Um, so patch tool. All you do is you circle the area you want to fix and you pull it to whatever skin looks better like that. And then because it's feathering, it, you won't really see a really hard outline, which is better. Um, don't be too fussy. Even if, you're, even if your shape's a bit like jagged like this, it, it will still do it, right? Um, so don't judge me on my circles. So... Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so this is what we'll do. I'm going to speed... Maybe I'll speed this up just so it's quicker. Okay, so that's that. Um, this kind of uh, uneven skin and stuff that will fix in frequent separation. This yellow will fix now. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm going to flatten this. Okay, we're going to try to fix this yellow. So because this is a bit yellow, I don't know why. It must be a reflection from the grass or the tree. So this and that you can kind of fix really easy. So all you do, selective color. Now you know it's her skin tones are red, even if she she's a dark skin girl, but she's it's it's still considered red. So if you move this slide around, you can see if it's red. So it's, if it's making a dark or lighter, that's red, right? So I leave this on red, and then all you do is you got to take the yellow because you can kind of assume that's yellow, um, and take it down, right? So you'll see it's already changing, but it's changing the whole shot. We don't want that to happen. So once you've got it down a bit. Hmm. I wonder if you can neutralize it a bit more. Okay, if you add a bit of cyan in as well, it's also fixing it a bit. So, now, all you're going to do is you're going to go Control i right? That's uh, going to invert the layer. You're going to take a paintbrush, you're going to take a white, ooh, you're going to take a white paintbrush at full opacity, and you're going to paint over the part that you want to fix, so over the yellow that's here. Right, so it's not going to add it to the whole shot, it's just going to add it to these areas here. I see that's not working so well because it's not red. But uh, that's it. You can also use the neutral one, but then it's going to affect everything like the background. So like this, if I paint there, it's not going to do anything to the green because it's in a different channel to the red. So you don't even have to be too serious about it, but it will do it to here. So if you want to see what it did, you can see only white's affecting, black's not affecting. That's what it's fixed. So it's very neutralized. So you can fix that a bit more in fre frequency separation. But uh, for now, I think that's good. Right, so we flatten that. Um, okay, now frequency separation. I'm not going to run this uh, like one step at a time because it's kind of a process. But you can teach yourself how to make this action. If you want to find a good tutorial on it, where I learned is from Flurn. So if you go on YouTube and type Flurn, I'll kind of make it pop up here um, they've got a really cool one to explain how to do it so this is just making a whole bunch of layers right so this is frequent separation that's my dodging and burn layers so if you want to know what it does if you look at this image right this is the this is the layer this is my duplicate so this is two layers that's making up that one layer so this is pretty much just blur it's just like um, what do I say? So it's everything out of focus. So you kind of put a blur layer and then the this layer is a texture layer only. So when you put them on top of each other, it's the same image, right? So if I only turn this one on, um, if I only turn this one on, it's a blur, it's very blurred, right? Okay, and that's for skin tones, that's not for any details, just skin tones. And then if you turn only this one on, it's just detail, that's why it goes so sharp. But if you turn both on, it looks exactly like the original, right? So if you show the original and, the, and all of them, it looks the same. Um, this allows you to work on this layer. So if I paint a big black line here, 
Let me show you. If I paint a big black line here, it's only painting on the background. You can still see the detail in an eye, right? Because it hasn't affected the, the detail. The detail is still the same. Okay. Um, now what that makes you allow you to do blah blah. What that allows you to do is to take a paintbrush and then sample a color. Like let's say I like this color. And then with a soft paintbrush, like 20, I can paint over the other colored areas and kind of make it blend a bit better. Look what I've done. So it's just cleaned up some of the blotches, especially on the neck and stuff. So lastly, these are my dodge and burn layers. There's lots of ways to dodge and burn with curves and with... Um, the tools for dodge and burn all kinds of stuff this is the way i like to do it i make two layers this is medium gray so if you make a new layer and you go on a shift backspace you can fill it with medium gray right so medium gray is just nothing so if you put a medium gray layer with a soft light uh, setting here or overlay setting here it'll go it'll go see through so that's normal if you put on overlay you won't see it right so now all you're going to do is on here is you're going to take a paintbrush a default one if I can get it to work. So a default paintbrush. So you can just push B and then D for default. That's black and white. So black will make things darker. White will make things lighter. That's it. Um, now the reason I have two is this one is stronger than that one. So overlay is stronger than soft light. This one I use for everything except skin. That one I use for only skin. So lips, eyes, background, hair, clothing. I use this layer for. Skin I use mainly because if you mess up skin you usually want to go backwards a bit because you've overdone it so I kind of separate them so if I mess up one or the two I can just drop the opacity on one instead of working right from the start again so I start on this one black to get 20% opacity soft brush and then what you're going to do is you're just going to mess with it so this is basically like the contrast slider but very specific to wherever you want it so if you want more here than there you can do that without having to like go through 500 steps to do that so um, we're going to softly just kind of mess with it a bit So, first layer. See your eyes are a bit too shiny maybe. So, that's what it's done. So then I'll drop the opacity just a bit. So it's not as harsh. <clears throat> okay, then we'll do skin. Right, so I've done, I think I've done a little bit, not too much. So if you look at it, look at the cheekbone, right? Nice, I like it. Um, and then you always just drop it down a bit so that it's not so harsh because sometimes you think it looks good, but then later on you're going to look at it and go, oh, I did too much. So that's that. And then I would flatten, unless I want to work on it some more. Um, I flatten it and then, then we can color grade if we want to. Now, what I wanted to do was the color grade. So, there's a few ways you can, it's called split tone in Lightroom. Um, what I would do, there's two ways. One is you take curves layer, you take the sRGB. Now, if you move this slider around, so this is black, this is as black as it goes, that's as white as it goes. So, if you move this that way, it's going to make all the blacks even stronger. If you move it this way, it's going to take the blacks out. Right? So, there's less and less and less and less and less black. Okay, so if you move it this way, it's just, it's this way along the line is kind of taking the darkest point and blending them together. So if this was the darkest, this was the next darkest. If you move this slider to there, there is no this darkness. It's all become one. That's why I see her hair fading into the background. If I, if I put this back, you can see the difference. So the more I move it up, the more stuff starts joining together, right? Until it's white. So, what I would do, if you want that faded film grade, you move this inwards a bit and up a bit, right? So about, maybe that's too much, about there, right? And then I would take another point right after it, bring it down, that'll bring the, the, the medium tones down again, and I put this back on the line. So that's one of the curves I like to do. 
So it's only done to the really blacks and the really like almost mids. So it's taken away from it. Then, then what you do, you can do it on here. You can just pull this in. That will make the blacks get a bit blacker. But what I like to do is I take a levels. Now levels the same as curves. This is black, that's gray and everything in between and that's white. So if you move this, white will get brighter or dimmer. This will make blacks dark or dimmer. So what I do is I just take the first number and I hit up a bit until the number gets, well, until the blacks go black again, right? So now from beginning to end, it's just blackened it a bit and it's changed the, the kind of tone of the background. Okay, and the more you mess with contrast, the more saturated the background will get. So I, you can drop that down again if you've done too much. Um, next thing, color grade. So if you want to, if you want to change the color now, if you go into curves and you change this to like say blue, if we lift this part up, so remember this is black, that's white. So if you lift this up, it's going to add blue. So up above the blue lines, adding blue. Um, am I lying? No, I'm right. If you lift it up, uh, it's adding blue, so the blue channel, into the whole shot, right? So if you do it here, it's going to add blue into mostly the blacks and a little bit into the rest. If you add it here, it's going to add blues into the highlights. If you do it here, it's going to minus blue from the highlights. So with these three colors, you can do quite a lot. So if you have to lift this up a bit and pull it in a bit, it's only adding really blue to the blacks. You see, if you look in the whites, it's not blue. It will do it to the, the midtones because this is in the middle, unless you bring this down. So if you do that to it, it will only be in the blacks won't really be anywhere else. So if that's already graded it a bit. Um, then say you want to pull this down, that's going to take away blue from the highlights. And then let's say you go straight into the red channel and now you put you put red into the shots, adding red into the midtones, or it's taking away red from the midtones. Um, there's a few curves that always work, like pulling this down and pulling this up. Always looks nice. So that you just got to play with. Then I flatten, then I uh, control shift S for save, and then I overwrite the file. If I'm happy with it, I don't generally save all the backups. Unless I still have the raws for at least a month after the shooting case that I'm on once an extra shot or two. But after that, I kind of call it, unless it would be for a big commercial shoot, then I might keep it for longer in case the client wants it. But for this, it's a kind of a test shoot and it was just for playing. And So that's the shot. So if I want to put the before in, so here's the before. Okay, so that's a shot off the Lightroom. The color grade, you can see it's a bit green. Um, and then that's the shot after Photoshop plus editing plus color grade. Anyway, so that's that. I'm going to save it again just in case it did something funny. Um, I always save it on 12 just so it's highest quality. And then that's all. So I would close that out and then I'd work on the next one. So I'm going to do these two right now. And it's going to be just kind of like sped up quickly. And then um, as the video ends, you can just enjoy it anyway. Cool. I hope you enjoyed that. Cheers. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed that. That's the video done. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the way I did it. I didn't have a long shoot to do behind the scenes of, so I didn't um, want to do it behind the scenes. So this is more something to do with how people ask you for how I color grade and how I cull through images so it goes quicker. Um, anyway, so I hope you liked that. Um, if you haven't yet, hit that button, hit this button. Uh, if you want to see some more please uh, subscribe um, and then please let us know what you think and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.